Hello folks, Major Gosnell here, and today I'm going to be starting my brand new Distant Worlds Universe series. So, Distant Worlds Universe is a space forex, but it's real-time, so it's not turn-based. It is exceptionally good fun. It doesn't have a massive following, however, I hope this series will encourage a few more people to actually go out and buy it. So we're going to start off here. The game is probably the most in-depth space forex you have. You have every possible system that you could possibly want in this game. So, let's take a look here. Now, there's a few different ways you can set up a game. You can either create your own universe, or you can do like an ancient galaxy and what have you. The good thing with this is you can start wherever you want. You can start with a massive empire already formed, or you can start pre-warp with a single planet and a couple of ships. The game is insane. I'm going to be setting up a custom game that's going to have a thousand systems. Roughly, you could have anything between 30,000 planets to 100,000 planets, depending on what's inside these systems. The map is bloody gigantic. It really is. Um, it Basically, the copy of the game I have has all of the expansions. So you can choose what you want, choose what you don't want, so on and so forth. So we're going to do a custom game. Do, 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 as a standard empire. Okay, now if you look here, you will see the options for the custom game, which are phenomenal. We're going to take a quick look here. So, you can pick which type of galaxy you want. You can have elliptical, spiral, ring, irregular, even clustered, various clusters. I normally go for even clusters, or actually no, I'll go for irregular. Fuck it. Now, Next thing you have is the amount of stars. So these are how many systems are actually inside of your galaxy. You can go from 100 stars, or you can go to huge, which is 1400 stars. Which, yeah, 1400 stars, which you could have anything between 1 to 10 planets inside of their orbit. 1400 seems like a good way to start. Physical size. So this is basically the map size itself, so everything isn't clustered right on top of one another. We're going to do, of course, as I'm running two GTX 1080s, huge, 15 times 15. Now, here you have expansion. Now the expansion means what state your empire is in when you start the game. You can go pre-warp, which is, like I said before, one planet, a couple of ships, that's all you got. Or you can go all the way up to old, where you're like an empire that's slowly in decline. It's it's crazy. It really is. Aggression. We're going to put it on Restless. It's kind of in between normal. It's a little unstable. Given unstable is the next option. It's a little... There's a little bit of risk there. It's quite good. Difficulty. We're going to put it on Hard because I'm not a complete puss. And Research Costs. Now, Research is very important in the game because you have full customizability of your ships. Uh, right down to the individual modules that you're putting into your ship. Once again, freaking crazy. I love this game so much. Uh, we're going to put it at normal. Uh, space creatures. So in the game, there's things like krakens and uh, giant scorpion bugs that will attack your ships. When they kill a ship, they actually get bigger. Their size increases. So you can actually end up feeding things lots of cheap ships to create this gigantic fuck off bug. Uh, there is an upper limit, I think it's like 1500 or something units. Uh, the game's ships are designed in unit sizes, so there is like an upper limit there. But once again, you can have some pretty crazy shit going on. We're just going to put it on normal so that there's not a lot of them flying around. Pirates, again, just normal. Uh, yeah, we'll put them on normal. Because you can actually hire pirates as mercenaries to protect your shit as well. Once your empire gets massive, it's quite useful. Pirate strength, do, 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 do. We will put it at normal as well. Okay. Regenerate resources. Regenerate scenery and research. Regenerate space creatures. Regenerate ruins. Regenerate special locations. Um, I'm tempted to not regenerate resources because there's an entire economy built into the game. And this isn't a simple thing of capturing systems. This is targeting their resources. There's a ton of materials. Your ships require certain materials to build them. So, yeah, it's it's 
very, very, very in depth. Um, should I put on regenerate resources? D, 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 D. Nope, I will leave it off. Makes the game a little more tactical. Okay, next colonization and territory. <laughs> So, we have colony prevalence. So this will basically... how many independent colonies will be around. Independent alien life as well. Um, dee, 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 dee. I will leave it on normal for that one. Independent alien life, we will say plentiful as well. Now, colonization range limit. So that basically means the range from one planet to the next. So you can't have like one planet in one side of the galaxy, another planet in the other, and your empire is spread out throughout the entire galaxy. You have to expand slowly. We're going to put it at 3.1 sectors. That's pretty reasonable amount of space because sometimes you will have that jump area that you can't actually traverse over. Um, do 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 do. Okay, next your race. So let's see what we got here. So I'm running the game as standard. There is a mod that adds a whole ton of races to the game, but I haven't actually installed that one yet. I'm going to stick it at this, and whenever I play, play uh, Space Forexes, I always play as human. I, for the life of me, I just can't get into the role-playing aspect of playing as a different race. I'm a nationalist. Woo! Just kidding. <laughs> I am... I'm a humanist? Yeah, a humanist. Okay, so... Uh, we will go for humans. There is actually a different type. Oh, wrong one. There is two types of humans, I believe. Do, 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 do. Oh no, that's in the mod. There isn't actually in this one, so we're just going to go with the standard humans. Okay. Now, each race has different stats, basically. So the humans are quite aggressive, quite cautious, quite friendly, and quite intelligent. Mm, disagree with that one. Quite intelligent, uh, very dependable. Um, cunning schemers, so you have better spies. Gifted scientists, faster research. Resource bonus, so basically if you have certain resources, your people will get a, a happiness bonus and strength bonus to your ships and what have you. Uh, to your troops, actually. And plus five are economy for with gold. It really helps development of the colonies, right. So then you have race victory conditions. 25% control. 33% of all continental colonies in the galaxy. Make mutual defense packs with 15% of all empires in the galaxy. So we will probably be ignoring that, though. It's just going to be sandbox mode for us. Characters, extra intelligent agents, more likely to generate new ambassador characters, more likely to generate new colony governors, more likely to generate fleet admirals. Oh yeah, by the way, there is actually characters that you can put onto your ships to fly them and give them little boosts and what have you. It, once again, friggin' insane. <laughs> um, new scientist characters and new intelligence agents. Right. Special government, way of the ancients, special technology, none. Disallowed technology, none. Okay. So, your empire. So, uh, home system. So this basically means what your home system is going to be like. We're going to leave it on agreeable because it gives you a little Kind of nice start to get started. Uh, we are going to call ourselves the do 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 do. Let me think. Let me think. What shall we call this? Looking around things on my desk here, I was going to go Volvic or uh, Advanced White on my toothpaste, so that would have neo nationalist uh, things. So yeah, no. Ah, <laughs> uh, did to do. Ah, I'm actually reading a book at the moment, Pax Romana. So. Pax, Pax, um, Pax Ert, right. The Pax Ert Empire. Okay, size is starting. Tech level is pre-warp. Corruption is normal. Uh, ooh, government, what do we want here? Then we'd go military dictator. So maintenance costs are minus 15, troop recruitment plus 30%, war readiness minus 50%, colony income normal, growth rate normal, approval 20%, second way the ancients, research speed plus 50. Ooh, that is quite a useful one to have. Republic, research speed. It's a shame that there's not a federal option. I kind of like to do the whole Starship Troopers routine. 
Uh, corruption, research speed, 25%. Oh, fuck democracy. Um, we will go for the old Roman Republic. Da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. Maintenance costs plus 10, trip recruitment normal, wariness plus 20%, so we can't really prolong our wars very much. Okay, next, other empires. So, we are going to put starting empires will be at 50. Do, do, do. I think uh, 1400 star systems, 50 empires is pretty reasonable. Uh, generate that. Okay. Now, allow independent alien colonies to start new empires during the game? Fuck it, why not? Next, victory conditions. Okay. Now, how do I set the sandbox on this? Do, do, do. Select any population economy. Race da, 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 da. So how do I set this now? Yeah, we just leave everything on tech. Unchecked, right. However, we are going to keep the storylines on. So, there's a lot of interesting little storylines within the game that are... I'm not going to spoil it ahead of the series, but some of the shit that goes down is pretty fucking epic. So, let's get started here. Uh, dee -dee -dee. Now, this will take a few seconds to actually do. It literally generates an entire galaxy. So, bear with me for a few moments here. Uh, while we're doing that, though, there is a few other things I'm going to be doing once the game loads up. There is a whole automation side of the game. You can automate anything. You can literally let this game play itself. That is how, once again, freaking amazing this game is. So I'm going to automate a few of the things that I don't really have an interest in, and like home, army building, and what have you. I'm more focused on the space combat side of things. We're just going to get all that started up, and hopefully this should load in very, very soon. Do, do, do. I'm actually going to do a little jump cut here, I think. And just as I click the stop recording button while we were waiting, it literally loaded in. Okay, so the game is paused. Now, unfortunately this might look a little squinchy to text on the screen, however, it's the game doesn't have support higher resolutions, so yeah. <laughs> However, I will try to explain everything as much as I can. So basically, your standard empire, the Age of Shadows, a lot of pirates, mercenaries floating around, a lot of empires kicking off. So we have no victory conditions. We're going to give it a, a good try. A damn good try. Okay, so we're going to start playing, and first thing we're going to do is we're going to pause. <laughs> For a very simple reason, so I can set up the automation. Now, let let me see what we can do here. So, this is the automation screen. What you don't want to handle yourself, you can automate. So, diplomacy and treaties we want to handle. War and war sanctions we will handle. Diplomacy gifts control manually. I think I've already set this up myself on a previous game. Economy and trade. Trade on our empires, control restricted resources, priority. Okay, engage tourism, tourism priority. Okay, intelligence, suggest defensive missions, that's good. Colonization, suggest new colonies. Uh, suggest new colony facilities, okay. Do And as you can see here, you can actually set how the AI will react to certain things, so it won't build certain things until the population popular, population, population reaches certain thresholds. So there is quite a lot of in-depth shit you can do here. Colony and tax rates, we're going to leave that on... Put that at normal as well, we don't want to overtax people. Increase colony tax, fuck it, yeah, we'll need that when that happens. Uh, research and design is completely manual. Okay, fighters were not in battle. That is good. Select which design sub roles you want automatically upgraded below. Do, 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 do. 
select which side of worlds you want automatically upgraded below. Note the ship design must also be automated for the designs to be automatically upgraded. If a design sub role is unchecked, then you must manually upgrade designs of that sub role. We'll leave it on for now. I'm not really quite sure if that's going to be. I think I have full control there anyway. Uh, construction is controlled manually. Troop recruitment is fully automated. So, like I said, the land combat side, oh yeah, there is actually a land combat side for planetary invasions, is fully automated. War and attacks. Uh, suggest attack targets. That's grand. Border, boarding and capture. Yeah, you can actually capture enemy ships as well. So, do do do. Okay, da, da, da. Okay, we can steal tech here. Okay, we'll just set that so if it's a high tech ship we can disassemble it to get their technology. Do 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 disassemble a base with high tech or larger. Okay. Always on the list of captured bases. Okay, fleet formation. Control manually. Yeah, that should be grand. Okay. So we've only put a few things on automated, so that should be grand. Civilian networks and everything else. Oh yeah, there's an entire civilian economy. Civilian ships will fly around that you've got zero control over, which is uh, quite a neat little trick as well. So let's scroll all down here. Okay. My apologies, and there we go. Okay, so let's take a look at our our system first. So that's our our little system here. Now you're going to see something in a minute. These planets actually rotate around the sun. So early on, you can actually have a quite a tactical game based on positioning. It's once again fucking amazing. I love it. Um. Okay, so we're just going to zoom out there. That's our our starting sector. And what's this? That's a quadrant. And that's the entire freaking universe. Well, galaxy. So we're that little dot here with a few planets. That's all planets, suns, moons, every other goddamn thing. There's actually moons in the game. Moons which will orbit your planet. This game is fucking massive. It really is. <laughs> boy, oh boy. So we're just going to zoom down here. We're going to get some little housekeeping done before we start the game off. Uh, first thing we're going to do is rename our planet, if I can remember how to do that. Okay, ah, here we go. So this is going to be... Do, 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 do. Earth 2.0. For my capitals. Earth 2.0. Right. <laughs> so we got that up and running. Okay. So that's our planet here. Now, what we're going to do here is just get a few things set up and going. So I'm just trying to remember all of the keys here. So we are going to build a doo -doo 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 -doo. just trying to remember what we can build here. Okay, da -da -da. so just trying to remember what I can actually build here. Uh, oh yes, here we go. So first thing you're ever going to want to build is a couple of research facilities. There's tree research branches, energy research, high-tech research, and um, weapons research. So I'm just going to build a few of them uh, here. High-tech, okay. And weapons research. And that is, and 
Whoops, wrong button. <laughs> it's been a while since I played, so do bear with me a few moments while I figure out what the fuck I'm pressing. Uh, la, da, 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 da. Okay, and we're actually going to build that energy one, so just want to make sure. So that's high tech, that is weapons, so we are going to build energy research right here. And we're also going to build a little spaceport. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to unpause the game. And you're going to see how stuff gets built in the game. So if we double click here, so as you can see here, it shows you what components are currently unbuilt. So it's slowly building the base. We can actually zoom in a little closer. As you can see, the planet's actually rotating as well as we speak. And as you can see, it's slowly getting built here. It's really cool the amount of detail that's actually in something that's not that graphically impressive. <laughs> so your ships will actually take on damage modeling and everything. It's really, it, it's fucking brilliant. So we're just going to start building up our research here. I'm actually going to click on our research screen as well. Now, one second here. We're going to want to queue up our, our weapons as well. So with your research, you can choose which branches you go down. The research tree is massive again. If you want to focus on projectile weapons, missiles, energy weapons, graviton weapons, gravitic weapons, whatever the fuck you call them, you can. Uh, and like most space games, beam weapons damage shields, projectile weapons damage hull, so on and so forth. I normally tend to go for do, 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 uh, missiles, actually, is my normal cup of tea. And if you hold down control, you can actually queue what you research, which is quite nice. Just going over what's available here, because it's been a while since I've played, and I just want to make sure... That, oop, no, that's not what I'm looking for. So enhanced missiles and then improved missiles, right. Do that there. Uh, actually, I'm going to deselect that one. We're going to get starfighters so we can start building fighters for engaging enemies. Okay, and dee 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 dee. That should be good for now. We might do some beam weapons as well, just so our ships have got a mix of firepower. Now, energy and construction. So, starting off in the game, your ships are going to be moving ridiculously slow because they're they're not built, they're not constructed properly. You don't have warp or anything. You have to do a little bit of exploring to unlock warp engines. You find this relic or something, and then you'll have warp engines unlocked. So, you have a few, a little bit of breeding time at the start. And uh, as you can see there, you have to uh, explore to get the warp field precursors. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on advanced nuclear fission so we have better actual power on our ships. And we're going to get some shields. That should give us enough time in between now and when we get warp field precursors. So that's handy. High tech, right. So the high tech side is sort of your ship systems and stuff like that. So each system sort of costs space on your ships. You can only build to a certain size. Certain ships have different roles, etc., etc. So what we're going to do here is just trying to remember what I normally focus on. Let me see here. So I think standard cargo bay is kind of important. Transport systems. Yeah, actually, oh. So, she didn't crash research. Oh, that's crash research. We're not going to be doing that. I thought we actually crashed for a second there. Um, dee -dee 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 -dee. What the fuck am I looking for? So, we are going to go for structured research. That'll give us a little more training there. We're going to go for crew systems, which will allow us to build hab modules on our ships, which is quite useful. Improve life support as well. It's been a while since I've done this, so I am a little rusty on what exactly I need. And we'll do some target tracking and countermeasures. Right. Now, research is a little strange in this game. So total research capacity, as you can see down here, is 12k for each of the disciplines. 
actual output is 17k. So we're doing more than our to total capacity at the moment. So we're maintaining our actual current research levels. It does expand as you get more and more stuff and research does sort of improve. It's sort of done the point system. It's a little complicated. I'll go into a little more detail <laughs> once I figure out what all the features actually do. So we're getting started there. Now, normally you do get a little raid by pirates early on, but you have an option to bribe them off. So we may do that. Now, I'm just going to take you around here. So you have a few options here. You can fade civilian ships in and out. So we're going to leave it off though so we can see the civilian ships. But you're not going to see them for a little while until you have a few different things around the galaxy and ships start traveling around, trading, and so on and so forth. Oh, construction research station gives a huge boost to our research efforts, allowing us to achieve technology breakthroughs faster. A new scientist has appeared at this new research station, Basant Dokari. So we are going to go into our character screen. I'm going to take a look at this guy here. Oh yeah, you have all these characters as well, which is pretty fucking neat. Um, so you have an ambassador, you have a leader, is Mattia Okoris. Colony corruption reduction is minus 10%. Diplomacy plus 3, he's actually pretty good stats. Troop recruitment rate is plus 10, military ship construction speed plus 10. It's not bad, I've had really bad leaders sometimes, so that is quite useful. Um, so, what's the stats? High-tech research and weapons research. Okay, so which base is he currently on? So this is one of the areas the game does sort of fall down. It doesn't list what type of research station he is on, so we, you're going to have to do some renaming here. So that's high-tech research station. Let's go back in here sure he is a high-tech man. He is, so we're going to leave him on there. Just going to click on that one there as well. Okay, and we are going to do, 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 ERT 2.0 HT Research. Oop, and I am slightly added spelling. Okay, and there we go. So that now should be listed as such. If we go here, and high tech research. Good job. Right. Okay, we're going to zoom in again. again. Now, we're also going to build some ships here. Da, da, da. Construction ship is not what I want to build right now. Okay, so we can't build any construction um, explorers yet. I think we need to wait for the spaceport there. Now we can actually up the speed a little bit as well here. I'm just going to little click on this one, and we're going to rename this again, Ert, do, 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 do. Weapons Research. Oop. There we go, perfect. energy and weapons research. What is the other one again? So energy research. Okay, there we go. Now there is one more thing I want to show you here. See how these um, bases are designed? You do actually have the option in the design screen do, 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 to determine how they actually look. So for example here, you can actually change the sprite on how your station looks. 
which is pretty fucking neat, if I may say so. You can set how you want your actual bases to kind of look. That was actually a pretty cool design there, actually. I think we might just go for that. So now, we can actually auto upgrade that one a little bit. Do, 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 do. Retrofit, and now that will retrofit to the upgraded design once everything else is constructed. Which is pretty fucking neat as well. So, we're off to a very good start. I am going to call a halt to the video here and get started then on the next one. So, thanks for watching.